Hi and welcome to the Windows Kernel Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I'll be your guide throughout this course. Okay, so at this point we have a functional driver entry and unload routine and a very simple create clause. In fact, we can go ahead and install the driver and then make sure, uh, load it up and make sure that in fact this device object is created, a symbolic link is created. So let's assume we've done that, we already know how to do that. And of course, we'll do that later on once the driver is complete. So for now, let's switch sides and see things from the client's perspective. So let's add an application, which is going to be a simple console application. Let's call that Boost, as opposed to Booster. So Booster is going to be the driver and Boost is going to be the application. And so what does the client really want to provide the driver? It wants to provide the driver with two pieces of information. One of them is the thread ID, and the other one is the priority to change that thread uh, to. And so what we're going to do, we're going to accept some parameters in the command line so that we'll be able to get this information from the client before actually invoking the driver. So let's do a simple check here. If argc is less than three, then let's uh, give the user a hint of how to use this application. So I'm going to provide boost here and then we need a thread ID and a priority. This is the things that are uh, understandable by the client. So once we do that, it's fairly easy to get the appropriate values. So the thread ID is going to be um, A to I from argv1 and the priority is going to be A to I for argv2. So let's just get these values out there. So now what I need to do is open a handle to the device. So let's do that. Let's use the normal create file function. We need to specify the symbolic link name prefixed by these two backslashes, a period and another backslash. And we know it's called booster because we've created the driver side of things. And so this is the name of the symbolic link, which is booster. So I'm going to use that. And then we need to specify some flags. In this case, generic write is going to be good enough because we're going to provide some data to the driver. So write is good enough. There is no uh, need to do any sharing in this case and no need for security attributes because we're actually opening uh, an existing device. It must be open uh, existing. And as usual, we're, don't, we're not concerned with any particular flags and a template file is really not necessary for when working with devices. So if that fails, and that fails returns invalid handle value, so let's uh, test this out, then it means something went wrong, perhaps the driver is not loaded for instance, so let's go ahead and write some simple text. Error opening device and let's just print out whatever get last error returns for us. And we can go ahead and return from the code. So now at the end, we're going to use the close handle function naturally to close the handle properly. So what are we going to do here? How are we going to communicate with the driver? And so in these cases where we're not talking about a pure read or write operation, typical way is to use device IO control. And so I want to call here, let's see if that actually succeeds. I want to call device I control. So what do we need here? First, we need a handle to the device. We have that already. Next, we need a control code, which we don't yet have. So let's go ahead and define one from the driver's perspective, because essentially the driver is the one setting up the protocol of communication with the client. So I'm going to add, uh, add a header file, very similar to what we've done in the previous driver. Let's call that a booster common. And this common is going to be common to user mode in kernel mode. So the first thing I want to do here is to define a control code. Let's call that a set priority. And as usual, we have to use the control code macro. And we've seen that we need to start with 8,000 and uh, the first function number that should be used by, by custom drivers is 800 according to the Microsoft documentation. And the most important part is the method for uh, accessing the buffer the user should provide. So in this case, I'm going to use method buffer because it's the simplest uh, method 
and the fact that we have some copying going around here is not going to be too bad because we're going to pass along a very small structure. Then I'm going to use the, the file any access value here. So now we have a control code on our hands, which means we can go ahead and go back to the user code and then just uh, include that in our file here. And so now we already have a control code uh, to work with. That's going to be set priority. Great. Now we need an input buffer. And the input buffer should contain the data I want to pass along to the driver. And remember, we need two things. We need to, to pass along the thread ID and the priority. So we have these values, but how should we pass them along? And so again, the booster common should define a data structure we should use. So I'm going to use struct thread data here. This is just a name I've selected. And I'm going to provide two parameters here, a thread ID and the priority. And so the thread ID should be a 32-bit number, uh, which is unsigned technically. And so ulong is a, is a good type to use. If you know something about user mode development, you might be accustomed to the dword type, which, is, which means the same thing. However, the dword type is not defined in the Windows headers. And so to make things simpler, I'm going to use ulong because ulong is defined in the Windows uh, user mode headers and kernel headers. Of course, I could have defined the word to mean the same thing as you long by using a type def, but really it's not necessary. And since the priority is just a number between 1 and 31, then uh, integer is way more than we actually need. And so this data structure is, again, common to the client and the driver. And so the client is going to create this uh, thread uh, data uh, object instance here. And we're going to fill that up with the data that we have. So I have a priority, which we already have, and we have the thread ID, which we have as well. And so our buffer is going to be that uh, data structure. And then we're going to set up the, the size of that uh, structure that we pass in. And then we need to provide an output that data but, or buffer, but in this case there is no specific output, so we can go ahead and use null here and zero, which means we don't really have any output buffer to provide. And in fact, the driver is not going to return anything interesting for this particular request, just going to do the thing and make the change to the thread's priority. And then we need to provide uh, a D word which indicates how many bytes have been uh, written to the output buffer. In this case, we don't have an output buffer. However, it's still mandatory to provide this uh, pointer to a D word, which we won't be looking at, but we do have to provide something. We can set this up with null. Otherwise, we'll get an access violation exception in user mode. And then finally, the overlap structure, which is relevant only for asynchronous operations, which we're not using here. And so if this fails for whatever reason, we can go ahead and display the error message. So error in device IO control. And let's go ahead again and display whatever get last error returns for us. And return. Once we get to this location, then everything should have worked just fine. So let me just print uh, a nice uh, success uh, message. And we can go ahead and close the handle and everything is great. From the client's perspective, everything is ready. All we need to do is implement device side control on the driver's side. This is something we're going to do in the next video.